This is Roll for Crit, and welcome to our review of Welcome To, which is a roll and write game from Blue Cocker Games in which you are planning your own little suburban neighborhood. And as a roll and write, I should say it's really a flip and write, that's what they call it, because there are no dice involved, only cards. Everybody has a little sheet of paper, just like this one, and you are filling in your houses with different numbers. How exactly does it work? So the point of this game is to make the most points. But the way you're going to be doing that is filling in numbers in these housing rows. You have three streets to fill up, as well as get some other points from some other things. The game starts off like this. You're going to have a blank sheet, but you're going to fill it up, as uh, Jonathan said before. You're going to do so by choosing these pairs. You've got a deck that's separated into three piles. Each one will have a symbol showing and a number showing. It's pretty much one side's a number, one side's a symbol. You will choose one of the pairings each round. Everyone's choosing from the same possible three choices. And you'll be able to write down a number in one of those households. There are some catches. You cannot, you have to go in number and order from ascending. So you can't put a 10 here and a 1 here. So you're probably going to want to put your highest numbers over here, your lower ones over here. In addition, no repeats with a few exceptions, which we'll get to. So that you have to be really careful how you lay out your houses. So these abilities will help you either get more points or maybe change the numbers in a way so you can maybe fit some houses in places that they might not be allowed to. The abilities you can get are this fence ability. It's let you put a line where these dotted lines are and make sort of an estate. They'll be, you can choose anywhere to whether you make a, just a single house in a state or maybe even six. You've got this real estate action, which lets you cross off down here. And what that does is at the end of the game, you can make it whatever the lowest number showing in each column, that's what each real estate costs. So if you crossed off the two and the three, each two real estate would be worth four points, which can earn you a lot of points if you have a lot of like two real estates. Then you've got BIS, which is uh, some weird term that has to do with housing. We're not sure what exactly it means, but it lets you duplicate a number in another house. So if you really need to fill out this and you can't get that one number you need, you can just do a BIS and put a duplicate there. But the more bits you use, the more it subtracts from your score at the end of the game. So you really sort of want to use that sparingly. Then we've got this uh, construction symbol, but I think they call it temp agency. That's right. I'm not really sure what that means. But what that lets you do is add and subtract uh, one, uh, one, 0, 1, or 2 from the number. So if that was paired with this 8, you could make it all the way as low as a 6 or as high as a 10. Which, uh, once again, lets you sort of uh, finagle the house in where you need. It also lets you cross off one of these symbols there, and whoever has done the most of that gets seven points, second, fourth, and one. Then we've got the pool uh, builder. Uh, certain houses have pools in them. If you put that house it's paired with, such as this 10 in the pool, here you can put a circle and outline that pool and cross the pool off there, which can get you more points at the end of the game. And finally, there's landscaping. Uh, we personally like to call it uh, gardening. It's this nice little tree symbol here. And you can cross off wherever you put the house in that street, you cross off one of these top ones. And once again, lowest number showing is the score you get. So if you cross off all three, that can give you 10 points, 14, or a whopping 18. So that's a lot of points. That's a lot of points. So uh, everybody, as we said, does these things simultaneously. You keep playing each game uh, until one of three things happens. First, there are these three city plan cards that are always out, and these are special goals that anyone can try to achieve. The basic ones are always uh, different uh, different types of estates surrounded by fences. So like this one is you need two six number houses estates. So two sections of six houses fenced in. If you do that, you get the first amount of points. Anyone who comes after you can only get the lower amount of points. So if one player gets all three of those, the game ends. Uh, the game could also end if someone is unable to fill in any of their houses three times as the game goes on just because their numbers don't add up. Or the game can end if one player has actually managed to fill in every single house on their on all of their streets. The exact opposite. <laughs> right. Uh, and then you just add up your points. They have a handy little chart at the bottom. And most points is the winner. Yes. Uh, there are some adventures as well. There is the roundabout, which pretty much lets you sort of divide and make a whole new street. Mm -hmm. uh, but that will give you more... Uh, it would subtract more points the more you use it. So once again, one of those things you need to use sparingly. There's an expert mode where instead of these piles, you do more of a drafting style. 
And finally, there's a solo variant. That's right, which is uh, pretty similar, uh, but has a, a couple of different wrinkles. It's, it's actually closer to the expert variant in some ways. And there's also more of these city right. plan cards, which They're are a bit get, more advanced. Like they maybe get weirder. <laughs> get all the pools in two streets, uh, fill up a full gardening, things like that. Yeah. So uh, that is the gist of the game. It is pretty straightforward, and uh, that's one of the really nice things about this game uh, that I know is one of your favorite things about it is it scales from one to, as it says on the box, 99 players. If you have enough sheets of paper and enough pencils and enough people, it's very simple. It really scales perfectly from a solo game to any number because the turns are simultaneous and because there's not a ton of player interaction, really. You're mostly focused on yourself. Uh, it, you can play with any number of people, which is great if you have a group and you're not sure how many people you're going to have from week to week. Um, uh, in addition, one of the cool things that we only found out recently is there's an app. Yeah. So pretty much you can have this sheet and pretty much just do it on your phone. Yeah, which is really nice. The game does come with a decent amount of these sheets, but of course eventually... You can see here, yeah. nice and thick. <laughs> eventually uh, you'll probably run out of them, but you can print more as well, but having that app is a really nice touch, I think. Uh, it, it's just, it's a fun game to try to go for that high score, uh, and I, I feel like it has that addicting quality. It even in the box has a list of achievements you can try to go for, uh, of trying to win the game certain ways or by exceeding a certain number of points points, uh, which a few of them we've managed to do. <laughs> There's also, you know, the distribution of the cards. So that's something else is you can uh, try to think, okay, I know that there's only so many. There's the fewest number of the ones and the 15s, the extreme ends. So those are usually more valuable. So mm -hmm. you have to be more careful when those come out as to where you put them. A lot of things to think of, like there's a lot of different strategies because of all the different effects. Like you might try to really go for these temp agency icons to get those points. Uh, or you might say, you you know what, I know these are negative points, but they're going to help me develop faster, so I'm going to go for a, every bis that I see and see how that works out. There's a lot of different angles that you can tackle, which is cool. Um, so what would you think? We, we have tried the expert variant uh, as well, uh, it, which is pr pretty different in feel. I think it, the word expert definitely describes it accurately because it is more challenging to play. I, I do enjoy, I think, the basic mode a little bit more, probably because I feel like it's in that mode, we're all playing with the same things and how do we like really uh, use them to the best that we can. And in the advanced mode, partly because the last one, advanced mode we played, we played with certain goals that made it that I felt like some of the cards were worthless and you just kept, that cards get, those cards with those backs kept getting passed around and just felt like instead of playing with three cards, which you usually have to choose, because pretty much the way it works is you're dealt two cards and someone passes you one, you're gonna choose two to use and it's like a draft system. But you can always just like I, I keep getting pool cards because no one gives a no one cares about pools and just sort of felt yeah. a little. It can it can definitely be more punishing and I, I do think there is more of a communal feel with this where even though it's it's in essence for the most part really a bunch of people playing a solo game together it does feel a little bit more like oh which one are they going to use of course people can use the same one as well if that wasn't obvious already. Uh, but it, yeah, it's definitely, it's a great example of, of, of a game I've introduced to, to family members and to people who are like hardcore gamers like us. I love the aesthetic. The game itself, I really enjoyed it because it's putting together, it's sort of like solving a puzzle. And it's a way that everyone can join in. It just works, I think it just works really well. Now, welcome to our crits and misses for welcome to. Beginning with crits. The game scales perfectly from just a single player to up to 99, so it can fit any size group you have. The puzzle that the game provides to you with the different effects and choices you have to make creates a number of different strategies you can go for to try and beat your high scores. And with the different city plan cards that could be available for each game, you may be looking for different routes for the most efficient gameplay. With options to print out new sheets of paper, as well as a digital app that you can play the game along with, there's no worry about running out of paper and not being able to play. Now let's see what misses have moved in. In expert mode, depending on what city planning cards you have, the drafting mechanic can make it feel like certain cards are constantly passed around, which makes you feel like you have fewer choices. I'm glad that they provide different options in the game so you can freshen things up if you've been playing for a while, but depending on what comes out, uh, the game could feel kind of punishing. The game boils down to pretty much everyone playing the same solo game together, which can leave some people wanting more player interaction. 
I welcome, welcome to, to our board game collection. I think it adds a fun addition in the flip and write area and makes this really fun sort of puzzle solving in terms of trying to get the right numbers in depending on what cards you have available and with the goals that are out. In addition, with the expert mode, you will actually have to think a little bit uh, quicker on your feet and you might have to think, do I really want to pass this card on depending on what's in your hand? Yeah, there's a lot going on in a fairly small and cheap package. Uh, definitely an easy one to recommend for people. Uh, I was thinking that one thing we didn't mention at all uh, which I think is a testament to the gameplay and how smoothly it goes, is that, like, you know, there's no dice, but it kind of simulates a roll and write in that it still is a lot of luck, depending on what which cards flip out. You may just never get the combination that you want. But uh, unlike, I feel like a lot of games, we would count that as a miss, but you don't. it doesn't really feel as bad in this game. It does feel like you have enough choices that if you're smart enough, you can make it work, no matter what you're presented right, with. Right, and that's why it felt more like a puzzle where you have to move things around instead of just let's see what I get. Like, maybe near the end, if you have, like, one or two houses, you're like, if a 15 doesn't show up, I'm in trouble. Right, right. But, but at that with, point, if, if that's your make or break, you probably right. screwed up already. <laughs> but with the BIS, as well as the uh, temp agency, they give you uh, plenty of ways for you to really sort of push or pull where you need to. Mm -hmm. And I know the bear, you happen to fill all the houses, but I feel like a lot of them, we don't fill them all. Usually the goals can end up. Oh, yeah. Being the, uh, the end condition. I think that's, uh, in, our, in our experience, I think that's most commonly what, what's, what, what will happen. Yeah, so definitely fun. Uh, can be an addicting little game. Uh, really cute. Easy recommend. Once again, it's Welcome To. That's with three dots at the end. That's important. <laughs> you have to decide what the rest mm -hmm. of the title is when you name your town. <laughs> if you've played this game, we'd love to hear what you've named your towns, as well as how many times did we say the word welcome in this video? <laughs> I hope it was a welcome amount for you. Uh, anything like that. What are your high scores, perhaps? I'd love to hear about that. Uh, you can let us know in the comments below. You can also find us on Twitter, Facebook, other places also in that description. Uh, or just let us know what you think if there's a game you want to hear us review in the future. Mm -hmm. Until then, uh, we're moving into a brand new neighborhood, baby. <laughs> I'm Jonathan. <laughs> I'm Will. <laughs> and this was a Roll for Crit review. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more awesome board game content from Roll for Crit. And please leave a comment. We're lonely.